Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today we'll be enjoying... Why do I say that? I even make a joke about it. Today I'll be drinking. I assume I'll be enjoying. Maybe that's just my default state. Anyways, I assume I'll be enjoying the Abita Christmas Ale. This is the 2022 release of the Abita Christmas Ale. They make this every year, but apparently the recipe changes every year, so they note it's unique. So just for your own reference, this is not the 2023 Christmas Ale. This is not the 2021 Abita Christmas Ale. This is the 2022 Abita Christmas Ale. So this is a holiday dark ale, or a special dark ale for the holiday season. A dark ale does not necessarily mean a stout or a porter. As you can see here, this is an amber colored beer. Um, so called an amber ale. Dark is just, it comes back to the color of the malts that were used to make the beer and not necessarily, it doesn't mean black. It just means darker than other malts. <laughs> so, you know, there's blonde malts, tan malts, whatever. And then there's these amber and brown malts. And then there's the super dark malts. I can't remember what they're called. The ones that they make porters and stouts and other super dark beers with. Anyways, this is a dark ale, even though it's only really, you know, honey colored. And uh, this is a brewery out of Louisiana, I wanna say. That's what it says on the back. Yeah, Abita Springs, Louisiana. And it's made using spring water, which I suppose means it comes from a hole in the ground, not that they only pick it up during the quarter of the year. Ha ha ha. <laughs> hmm, okay, there's definitely hops in there. Um, maybe a mild honey? That's interesting. Um, I can smell the malt. I can smell just a, a faint kind of green grass hop, almost almost like the some of the fresh hops that I had earlier this year that were really kind of uh, uh, mild, subtle, fresh uh, flavor. I think this beer wants to be a little warmer. I'm also picking up some, not the off notes from the gluten-free beers, not those, you know, Stockton Stockyard smells, but kind of a, a I want to, the word loam con, comes to mind, kind of a, a, a mushroom, earthy, but not dirt, um, like old leaves kind of smell. That might warm to a mild apple juice. Yeah, that's brightening up a little bit now, just coming to life a little more. Yeah, this beer wants to be probably 40 or 50 degrees, I would guess to be smelled properly. It just seems to be coming to life a little bit better. But yeah, I mean, so I'm smelling malts, I'm smelling some very light, mild hoppiness, and I'm smelling kind of a, a honey and an earthy uh, undertone. Let's see how it tastes. Hmm. Okay, there was some cracker. There was kind of a, a juicy sweetness at the beginning. Um, and then almost a burnt toast, kind of real dry hops. And then this kind of um, nutty, bready finish, like a nut bread, like a, a walnut, um, a walnut bread finish. Not, not like a sweet bread. I mean, some sweetness in there. Um, it's all really compact. Like it's all happening really quickly. There's not this super long the, the only thing that, that hangs around for any amount of time is the finish, this kind of nut bread walnut. You know how walnuts have that um, kind of almost a bitter bite to them? So it has that. Uh, so it's a, it's a nut bread, but it has that almost like walnut bite to it. At the beginning, there's almost the promise of some dried chocolate and maybe just a wee hint of apple juice as well. There's some interesting flavors going on here. Um, it's definitely a malty beer, which is good. I mean, uh, you see so you're tasting, you're tasting the roasting of the malt in this. The darker roast produces that toasted color, that toasted taste as well. So the, the malts are very present here. 
Um, I'm not seeing that they added a whole bunch of extra adjunct spices. They just produced a nice, warm, roasty beer. And that works. Works very well. This almost drinks like a lager in some interesting ways. Um, it has that, like I was talking about with the Sam Adams Winter Lager, it has kind of that, it's not, not a muddle, but just kind of, the whole thing is kind of fudged together a little bit. Um, like you, 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 you painted a painting and then you smudged everything just a little bit. It's, it's just kind of, it's all mixed together. And while there are distinct points, they've lost, they're not like sharply distinct. It's just they're, they're recognizably individual, but they're still kind of flowing into each other. And it's not an unpleasant thing. Not, not saying that to say this is, un, uh, you know, unpalatable, untasty. It's, it's a tasty beer. It's just it, everything's kind of merged together and, and faded together a little bit. It's a good beer. Sorry. It is a tasty beer. It is a beer that I enjoy. It is a beer that I am enjoying. So I guess I proved myself right. I am enjoying this beer. <laughs> It's always nice when I find myself right. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. Um, what I would drink it with, I think this would go pretty well with, with um, foods. Not necessarily super rich, decadent, you know, uh, cheeses, cured meats, stuff like that, but really any dinner spread. Or, or lunch spread, anything where you have a nice, um, yeah, you have some good vegetables in there. Like I think this would go really well with with gourds and 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 uh, squash, um, with root vegetables, with roasted meats. Um, I think it would work very nicely. It has, it doesn't have enough sweetness that it's gonna sound that it's gonna feel like a dessert beer. It doesn't have so much bitterness that it's gonna kick the tail of a more subtly flavored dish. Uh, it's just kind of sitting there in the middle, being tasty and comfortable, and I think that would work very well with your, uh, you know, your 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 soups, your stews, with your, uh, you know, roasted squash, with uh, potatoes, you know, yams, whatever, parsnip stuff like that. I think that would work quite nicely. I also think this would probably work because it has a relatively low bitterness. I think this would work very well for say a a beer bread. If you've never had a beer bread, they're like the most stupidly simple breads to make. It's, it You use the beer instead of yeast, though you can still use yeast. Um, you use the beer as the yeast, and it, um, you know, and obviously a lot of the liquid, it's basically flour and beer, and you mix it up a little bit. You don't even have to knead it. You throw it on your on your cookie sheet. You, you cook, bake it on a cookie sheet rather than in a loaf pan, and it makes a nice kind of log loaf kind of thing. Um, quite a lot of fun and because they're just so simple to make they're easy to make duh uh, and it comes out with a lot of really good flavors and it really brings on the character of the beer i think this beer would work actually quite well for that unfortunately i only bought one bottle so i won't be doing that myself this year that i know of yet anyways this has been the christmas ale by abita brewing 2022 release i'm matthew i've been chewing the brew and i'll catch y'all on the flip side